Thumbs up, thumbs down. Good. Good. How many extra guys have to watch with you? So there are two types of bonding. What are they? Ionic and covalent. And how would you describe the difference between them? Ionic bonds have metal, and because they have metal, they completely transfer electrons. We said metals want to lose electrons to get to their octet, their eight valence electrons, right? So they're going to completely give it away. In covalent bonding, the two atoms will share an electron. It's important to remember if two electrons are sharing an electron, they both claim it as completely being theirs. If, if I'm sharing one with Griffin, I don't say I have half, he has half. We both say that we have a whole electron. So the first type of bonding was like this bonding. It was like we talked about last week. Remember the metals will lose the electron, they will give it to the negative, the non-metal negative ion. The non-metal will gain the electron. And like we learned, what charge those elements form and how many electrons they gain or lose is based off of where they are on the periodic table. So that way they want to get to their eight valence electrons. They're either going to lose some or they're going to gain some. So this is literally the reaction to form table salt. This is sodium metal. This is chlorine gas. If you put them together, they will react to form sodium chloride. The electrons are simply coming from here, going to the chlorine, making ions, and then you have a positive and negative charge mixed together in the opposite of the track, and they hold them together. If you look at the forces here, there are attraction and repulsive forces going on at the same time. Because in a crystal, we have multiple of each type of atom. So between the sodium, the yellow one, and the chlorine, the green ones, we have attraction. Because they're positive and negative, so there's attraction between them. But we also have the greens next to each other. And we have the yellows next to each other. That's a negative next to a negative, and a positive versus next to a positive. They're going to repel each other. And so what's happened is all of these forces work on, on each other. They move the atoms around until they find their happy place. If you've ever taken physics, it, this is a balancing of forces. How many take, uh, people have taken physics and have all the little arrows for the forces? Oh. No, what are you talking about? Yeah, vectors. Yeah, I, well, I, I didn't calculate. Yeah. So the atoms get pushed around until all of a sudden they're getting pushed and pulled equally on all sides and then they just stick in place. That is what's holding these atoms where they are. And for each type of compound, that shape is going to be slightly different. And what that shape is, is a crystal lattice. So this is the shape of a sodium chloride crystal. They're very neatly organized in kind of a cubic shape. If it was three-dimensional, it'd go in all directions. It's basically alternating between chlorine and sodium. Covalent bonding, we have a sharing of electrons. And here, the bonds are within molecules. Okay? Here, we have atoms that formed ions, and they're just a big group of them. We have a bunch of sodiums and a bunch of chlorines, and all the positives are attracted to all the negatives, all the negatives are attracted to all the positives. And so this chlorine is no really no more associated with that sodium than the sodium that's here, or here, or here. In covalent bonding, we have molecules. And each atom in that molecule is in that molecule. It's independent from all of the all of the other molecules that are next to it. So in this case, we have attractive and repulsive forces 
but rather than being due to charges, we they're more about subatomic particles. So in this molecule, this is a molecule made up of two atoms, you have the nuclei in the center, and on the nuclei have positive charges, that's where the protons are. So we have positive nuclei, and we have negative electrons. So again, we have positive next to positive that kind of repel each other. The electrons repel each other, but we also have attraction between the positive nuclei and the negative electrons. And again, that for those forces push and pull until everything finds where it wants to be. In the covalent bonding, we don't transfer electrons because both atoms are already very close to having a noble gas configuration. So if we were combining fluorine and oxygen, Oxygen needs to gain two. Fluorine needs to gain one. If fluorine says to oxygen, give me one of your electrons, and oxygen does it, fluorine is not happy, but now oxygen is two away. So instead of having basically highway robbery, they just share them. So oxygen says, well, if I get two fluorines, if I'm oxygen, and I have two fluorines, one over here, one over here, and they each bring their electrons, and I share one of theirs, one of electron with this fluorine, an electron with these, and then I also share one of mine with them, everybody ends up happy. Because like I said, if I'm sharing one with Griffin, we both count that electron completely as ours. So it's essentially acting like two electrons. It makes me happy, it makes him happy. This is carbon dioxide. Unlike the sodium chloride, where we had the sodium and the chlorine and the sodium and the chlorine, and it was just kind of a, just an organized mess, basically, where each atom is independent of each other. For a covalent bond, you get molecules that are independent of each other. This oxygen is in this CO2 molecule. It is bonded to that carbon. It is not bonded to that carbon. This molecule can go over here. This one can go over there. Okay. So, a couple weeks ago, we learned the Lewis dot symbol, right? It was easy. You count how many valence electrons you have, and you put that many dots around the symbol, right? And I said that was the easy one. Coming up, we were going to have Lewis dot structures. And those were the more difficult ones. That day is today, okay? They're really not that hard. They're a fair amount of work. They're more of like a puzzle, okay? And uh, you'll see what I mean by that. They really aren't that hard once you figure out how to solve the puzzle. So, the Lewis dot structures only deal with covalent bonds. We're going to be making compounds that are made up of covalent bonds. And when you're doing this, the number one rule is that every element, every atom in that, in that molecule has to be happy in the end. And they're only happy if they have eight valence electrons. Remember, they want to get to the noble gas configuration. So every single, every single element in that compound has to have eight. The only exception is hydrogen. Hydrogen will only have two electrons. So in this structure, in these structures, the dots are our electrons. So if we look at this compound, this is CF4. If you look at each one, this carbon has eight. All eight are shared with fluorine, but that carbon claims all of them as its own. So that carbon claims eight, and each fluorine claims eight. Each one has six of its own, and then two shared. But the two shared count completely. So each fluorine has eight. 
down here, this is fluorine with hydrogen. The fluorine has eight. The hydrogen has two. Needing to have eight electrons is what we call the octet rule. Okay? That will be quiz or exam question. Okay? Make sure when you draw these structures that everything has eight unless it's hydrogen. And hydrogen has to have two. If you have an atom that does not have eight and it's not hydrogen, something's wrong. If you have a hydrogen that has something other than two, if it has one, if it has three, if it has eight, that's wrong. Hydrogen has to have two. If you have all eight, that is an octet. So it's the octet rule because everything has to have Those eight electrons are going to be in pairs. You will never draw a single dot electron in a Lewis structure. Electrons always come in pairs. And if you think about it, it makes sense. You can't get eight if you have a single electron. Because then you're going to have an odd number. And eight's not odd. So you have to have pairs of electrons if you have eight they're going to be four pairs. So get in the habit when you're drawing these, draw pairs at a time. Like we said, hydrogen only has two. So anything other than hydrogen will end up with four pairs. Hydrogen will end up with one pair. So this was our Lewis dot symbol, right? Well, since you're going to take the Lewis dot symbols of multiple atoms and pull them together to make a Lewis dot structure. So the first thing you do when, you have, when you're drawing these structures is to figure out how many valence electrons each atom is coming with. Okay? So, let's look at hydrogen. How many valence electrons does hydrogen come with? one. It's in the first column, so it comes with one valence electron. So if it comes with one, how many does it want to get to? Two. Hydrogen wants to get to two. So how many does it need to gain? One. And so this tells us that elements will make one bond for every electron it needs to gain. So Hydrogen needs to gain one electron, so hydrogen will form one bond. How many does, how many valence electrons does chlorine come with? Chlorine is here. Seven. So how many does it need to be happy? One. It needs to gain one to get its octet. What about oxygen? It comes with six, so it needs two. So it will form two bonds. What about nitrogen? Five. It comes with five, so it needs three. Nitrogen will form three bonds. And carbon comes with four. four, so it needs four, and so it needs to make four bonds. Another way you can check, make sure your structures are correct. Look at all the different elements in your structure, figure out how many bonds that element wants to form and see if it has formed that many bonds. So because oxygen wants two and hydrogen wants one, that's why water can do this, right? Correct. So H two O. The oxygen in the middle needs to form two bonds. It's gonna form one bond here, one bond there. Each hydrogen needs to form one bond, so that's one for that one and one for that one. Okay, so these are our steps for writing our Lewis structures. They're going to make sense the first time we use them. Okay, the first thing we have to do is write what we call the atomic skeleton. This is an atomic skeleton. 
I've drawn symbols for the atoms where they're going to go. I have not drawn any of the electrons yet. Okay? Once you do a few of them, it'll become very obvious what the skeleton is supposed to look like once you're given a structure. But you are not being tested in this class in your ability to take a formula and write the skeleton. So if you don't know what the skeleton is supposed to look like on a problem, you can ask me. And I can tell you this is what the skeleton is supposed to look like. Your job is the electron. So once we write our skeleton, we have to figure the total number of valence electrons that we have. And so you just figure out how many each atom comes with and add them together. So how many does this hydrogen come with? One. That one also has one. How many does this oxygen have? Six. So I have one plus six is seven plus one is eight. I like to literally write the number of electrons that I have to work with down. Okay. So I have eight valence electrons that I can work with. Okay? Step number three says place two electrons between each pair of bonded atoms. So that hydrogen is bonded to that oxygen, and that oxygen is also bonded to that hydrogen. Think of that essentially as you're putting some glue in there just to hold everything together. Because you know that there's a bond here. And so you know for a fact that there is at least one pair of electrons between those atoms. Because if you are sharing a pair of electrons, that is a bond. But if we go on, we're going to have single, double, and triple bonds. We don't yet know whether we have those here. But if two atoms are held together, you have at least a single bond. So I put my pairs in here to hold everything together. And then it says add remaining electrons to complete the octet of the things on the outside. And so when we look at this, we call this the center atom. Okay? In this case, we have two outer atoms. In other cases, we'll have three. Sometimes we'll have four. But there will always be one in the center. Once you hold everything together, you're going to add dots to the outside atoms until they are all happy, until they have their octet. In this case, our outside atoms are hydrogen cells, and so they don't need an octet. What do they need? They need two each. So in this case, they are already happy. The hydrogens cannot have more than two. So if I put another pair here, that hydrogen has four. It cannot have four. So I can't add any more dots to the outside. So then I come down here, finish rule four, and then it says once the outside is finished, then start putting them on the inside. Yes. We're supposed to have eight, right? To have the octet. Correct. So we only have four for the oxygen right now, right? right? So hydrogen comes with one, right. and the other hydrogen comes with one. Correct. So are you not supposed to, to have an eight? Are you not supposed to have like one at the top, one at the bottom, one at the top, one at the bottom? Forget, forget, you're, you're getting ahead of me. Oh. So we have to, we're, that's right where we are now. Oh. We're finishing rule four, okay? okay. The hydrogen and the outside are happy, but we have electrons left over, so now we can use them to try to make the oxygen in the middle happy. So we have how many electrons left? Four. And so I'll put them here. And now I ask, is oxygen happy? Yes. I, oxygen has eight electrons. I've used all of my eight. And you can't have any left over. I've used all eight. Oxygen has eight. Each hydrogen has two. Hydro each hydrogen formed one bond like it wanted to, and the oxygen in the middle formed two bonds. One here and one here. And it wanted to form two bonds. So in this case, step five says, if once you run out of electrons, things aren't yet happy, 
then you can start moving electrons towards the center to make double and triple bonds. In this case, we don't have to. Because all of the electrons are already in the middle, and everything's happy. So this is done. This is the Lewis dot structure of H2O. Oh, so hydrogen has, all the, has to always have one? One pair. One pair. One pair and one bond. Okay, because I was thinking the dots I was talking about, I thought we were going to share them among the hydrogen because hydrogen, when it has one, it needs to have one more, no? Yes. So, in this case, that, this, let's say this hydrogen brought that electron, and then oxygen brought that one, okay? But once they share, hydrogen has two, hydrogen has two, oxygen has eight. Oh, okay. So you place them in the middle, not on the sides of the hydrogen. hydrogen. You always start on the outside. The rule of four says start on the outside, then move in. But hydrogen can only have two. So I can't put anything on the outside, because then okay. it has more than a Okay. Once everything on the outside is happy, then you move in. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Now we're just going to do some examples, because it really is like a puzzle. And the more time you do it, the quicker you're going to get. So we need to draw the Lewis structure, Lewis formula, the same Lewis structure, for formaldehyde, CH2O. When you look at a formula like this, the thing that's the center atom will almost always be the first element listed. It will also never ever be hydrogen, oxygen, or halogen. Okay? Hydrogen and oxygen will be on the outside, halogens will be on the outside. You're looking for something that's not a hydrogen, an oxygen, or a halogen to stick in the middle. Okay? So in this case, it is carbon. So I'm going to write a carbon, and I'm going to arrange the other atoms around it. In this case, I have two hydrogens in an oxygen. Okay? So I'm going to have three atoms on the outside. You can have up to four, but there are only three of them in my formula. It doesn't matter how I arrange them. I'm going to put H, H, O, but you could put this hydrogen up here, you could put the oxygen here and the hydrogen there, it doesn't matter. Okay? As long as they're all connected to the center, carbon, that's what matters. Once we get into lab and we start making three-dimensional models in a couple weeks, you'll see that three-dimensionally it's actually the same no matter where you write these. Okay, it's just we're taking something in three, three dimensions and putting it on a two-dimensional board. So we can put them wherever we want. Next step was to add up the number of valence electrons. So how many does carbon come with? Four. How many does hydrogen come with? Yeah. One. So I have four, five, six. How many does oxygen come with? Six. six. So I have 12 moles. The next step was to add the pairs to hold everything together. So I'm going to put a pair here, here, and there. I now have everything glued together. And I've used six electrons. I have six left. Next step said to take the electrons you have left, add them to the outside to make them happy. Can I add anything to this hydrogen? No. no. It already has two. Same with that one. Can't add any here. So I, but I can add them to this oxygen. I have six to add. This oxygen has two. So I can go three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've used up all my electrons, right? I have 8, 10, 12. That oxygen's happy, hydrogen's happy, hydrogen's happy. Am I done? No, no why not? That's carbon. The carbon's not happy. Carbon only has 6. What can I do? Can I do that? If I put, I can, if I put them there, and I take from oxygen. Does that work? Yeah. No. 
Because oh. oxygen has seats, right? But you have to have eight in the end. Those two oh. pairs need to be on the outside of the bond. You have to rearrange the bond. Yeah. I have to go to that last step. Step number five said move electrons in to make multiple bonds. So I can take this pair or that pair or that pair. It doesn't matter. I'm going to take this pair, move it there. Okay. Once I do that, I get that. This is a double bond. It is two pairs of electrons. Okay. This hydrogen has two. This hydrogen has two. This oxygen still has eight. Even though four of them are shared, it still claims that it owns all four. Okay? The oxygen has eight. And this carbon has eight. Everything has its octet. Hydrogen has its two. Each hydrogen formed its one bond that it wants to form. Oxygen, we said, likes to form two bonds. And it has, it's just, it's one double bond. It can form two single bonds or one double bond. And it formed one double bond. Carbon likes to form four bonds. It formed one, two, three, four. So here, everything is happy. That is the Lewis structure for formaldehyde. You don't need the circles, but if the circles help you, you can draw. Yeah. <coughs> for the double bond, can you just draw lines in diagonal? If you have learned in the past to draw lines instead of dots, you can do that. I'm not going to do that, so it doesn't mean anything to you. Just do the dots my way. Okay. But if you know the lines, you can do the lines. Which one's more popular? In this class, probably dots. <laughs> you see. It looks better as lines to the eye, yeah. but here you have literally dots that you can count. And so if you're not comfortable, the dots are definitely the way to go. Because a line that she's talking about actually represents a pair of electrons. So each line would be a, each line would be a pair, so each atom would need four lines. Those are step-by-step -step instructions of what we just did. Hydrogen cyanide. So look at that formula. And what do you think is the center atom? Carbon. So in this case, the first element listed is hydrogen. But I said hydrogen is not in the middle, right? Carbon, in this case, is. Nitrogen can also be in the middle. And so, in the, for, so for this one, if you weren't comfortable putting carbon in the middle, this would be a very good one to ask me. Okay? Because I would show you that the skeletal structure is that. It is literally HC. So how many valence electrons does hydrogen come with? One. One. How about carbon? Six. Four. So there's five. How many does nitrogen come with? Five. Five. We have ten total. Oh. What's my next step? One bond, one pair for each bond. Got to hold everything together. Yeah. Okay. So on um, this one, is it? No, it doesn't mean. Is it any three? So that means that's how many it needs. Or? That's that's how many it needs. Yeah. So in the end, so we're going to make try to make sure that hydrogen has three bonds. Because it needs to gain three, so it's going to need to make three bonds. So that's something we'll check at the end. So I've added one pair here, one pair there, to hold everything together. I still have eight electrons left. Where do they go? Six. Thank you. Thank you. On the end, we start on the outside. Can't add any more to hydrogen. So I'll add six to nine, which now has eight electrons. Are we done? No. No, why not? Carbon only has four. 
So what can we do to make carbon happen? We can do a triple bond. You can take this pair and put it there, and and that pair and put it there. Well, we end up with is that. Hydrogen has two, nitrogen has eight, carbon has eight. Hydrogen formed one bond like it wanted to. Carbon likes to form four bonds. It has one, two, three, four. And nitrogen likes to form three bonds. One, two, three. So that is the structure for hydrogen cyanide. We'll do carbon dioxide. What do you think is the center atom? Carbon. Carbon. So I'm going to put carbon, oxygen, oxygen. This is to me the most logic, best visually way to draw it. But you are perfectly correct to draw it something like that. Okay. So we're going to draw it like this. How many electrons does oxygen come with? Six. Six. And there's two of them, so that's 12. Carbon comes with four. four, so we have 16. I'm going to put my pairs in there to hold it together. Now, where do the rest go? I'm going to go on the outside. So I have 12 left. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. I'm out of electrons. Are we done? No, why not? Carbon. Carbon's not happy. So what what can I do here? I can move that there and what? There. I can move those there. Why would I not move leave those there, but leave move those down here also? Wouldn't that accomplish the same thing? What if, what I'm saying, what if I, instead of doing two double bonds, I did a single and triple bond? Isn't everything happy there? <laughs> there is something wrong with that. Oxygen is waiting. They don't have to be. It doesn't have to be symmetric. Mm -hmm. But there is. We're breaking one of our rules in the structure. Carbon has more than it needs. Uh, it has six plus two is eight. It has four bonds. And the oxygen is in that bond. That oxygen has three bonds. That oxygen has one bond. Oxygens want two. So this is not. Correct. We need to move there and there to make two oh. double bonds. And that's in reference to the periodic table? What is Like How oxygen's two away from the noble gas? Because, because it's two away, it needs to gain two electrons. Right. If it needs to gain two electrons, it wants to form two bonds. Some of you, if you took chemistry elsewhere, you may have heard of resonance structures. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Basically, that is saying that in reality, this actually does exist somewhat. So this is very much more preferred. So in, in our class, this is the only correct answer. But this is incorrect. So what about S? O2. What do you think's in the middle? S. S. We got six and six as twelve. How many does oxygen come with? Six. No, oh, sorry, sulfur. Sulfur. Six and six also. So we have eighteen total. Where do I put the first few? Bonds. Bonds. Hold them together. Nowhere. 
Now I put them on the outside and I have 14 left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I still have two left. They already go in pairs. So we'll, we'll, then we'll try to make sulfur happen. Now I'm out. Are we done? No, what's wrong? Oxygen wants two bonds, yes. Not three? Oh, it's two away from the normal gas. Okay. Yeah, so you have too many for oxygen. Yeah, no. Oxygen has eight. Oxygen has eight. Sulfur has six. When you say it needs, uh, oxygen needs just two, I mean, uh, one, two dots count as a, a pair, a one bond, right? No? Yes. Yeah. The oxygen needs to form two bonds, so it needs to share two pairs of electrons. Yeah, so if you have two, four, six there on the oxygen, are you not supposed to just have two, four, and move the other pair to the to sulfur? So you're saying move this pair? Right. We can do that. What? Uh, well, yeah, I was just going to say, if you can do that, and just take the two pairs off the top and make two double bonds for each oxygen. If I take, you're saying take that and put it yeah, there? Yeah, Yeah, basically. I now end up with That's, yeah, I'm yeah. Oxygen has 10. Yeah. Can't do it. So this is a case where you can't make everyone perfectly happy. Okay. If we just do, just do the one, that oxygen has 8. Right? Sulfur has eight, that oxygen has eight. That oxygen has formed two bonds like it wants to. Sulfur wants to form two bonds. Right? Because it's yeah. just under it's right under oxygen, so it needs two also. Mm -hmm. But there is no way that I can have it have two bonds. I mean here it already had two, but it only has six electrons. The octet rule, having eight is the most important rule. Having the correct number of bonds is a secondary rule. In this case, you cannot fulfill the number of bonds that they want to have. They need to have eight electrons. They want to have a certain number of bonds. So in this case, this oxygen only has one bond. But there's nothing else I can do. There's nothing I can do moving electrons here so that everything has eight and the correct number of bonds. So do we have a total of 18 there or less? Yes. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that's the correct answer. This is the correct answer for that. It's the best that you can do. How do you know when to stop, though? Because I thought, I thought another one that you did was eventually you can do Yeah, you, you have to learn what you what you can do. You can move electrons from the outside to the inside. Everything has the correct number of electrons. There is nothing there's nothing that I can move to make it happen. It's kind of like chess. You don't know it's checkmate until you literally, unless you're a chess master or something, <laughs> until you literally figure out what is every possible move and you realize that none of them work. That's a super simple question. When you count from this way to like S, that's how many electrons are you? When you count from this way to S, that's how many bonds are you? So if you count from this way, that's how many electrons you bring? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then if you count from this way, this is how many it needs, which is how many bonds it wants to form. So this needs one electron, okay. so it forms one bond. These need two electrons, so it forms two bonds. Needs three, so it forms three. Four needs four, so it forms four. Okay, so it's best if you count from that one. It depends on what step you do. If you're adding up how many electrons you have, mm -hmm. you need to count from the last. Okay. If you're trying to figure out how many bonds it wants to form, you need to count from the right. Okay. Can you take a look at this? I mean, 
I know you're saying that you can't do it, but I thought that was good. Yeah. So this sulfur has four bonds of uh, one, two. That that's going to be another one with resonance structure, right? right. Pretty much all of the ones that you're going to do ha are going to have one center F. Then you're going to have up to four outer Fs. The only ones that you're going to need to know are these three that have multiple center Fs. Okay? So if you literally want to memorize the structures of these, you can. So this is C2, the first one is C2H6. Skeletal structure is C2, and then each carbon has three hydrogens. So it's C2, H6. How many electrons does a carbon come with? Four. There are two of them, so I have eight. So there's eight, and I have six hydrogens, each of which bring one. So I have eight plus six 14. is fourteen. What is always the first step? Put it, put it in the single box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I'm already out. Hopefully everything is happy. Is it? Yes. Yes. Everybody's happy. <laughs> carbon has eight. Carbon has eight. Each of the hydrogens have two. Hydrogens have one bond. Each carbon has four bonds. Okay? So that is C2H6. Now, we're going to go to the next one. We're just going to remove four, sorry, remove two hydrogens. So I am going to choose these two. When I remove those hydrogens, I also remove the electrons that it came that they came with. So before we had 14 to work with, we lost two. We now only have 12. So right now we have two, four, six, eight, ten used. We only have two left. So I can put them in the middle to get a double bond. Now everything's happy. Each carbon has eight, hydrogens have two. Now we're going to pluck off two more hydrogens. Take off these. When we do that, we lose two electrons. Though. Now we've got ten. Now what can I do? I've got two, four, six, eight already drawn. So it, if you have taken organic chemistry, in this situation, these are all single bonds. For every pair of electrons you pluck off, for every pair of hydrogens you pluck off, you're going to add a bond in the middle. So when you take off one pair of hydrogens, you go from a single bond to a double bond. If there are two pairs of hydrogens missing, you're going to add two extra bonds in the middle for a triple bond. So I guarantee you, you will have an exam question that asks you for the structure of one of those three. Oh, then can you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to it at the end of the year. Everything in here. <laughs> 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 you want to test? Can you make sure there's no extra dots on the paper? Like, make sure there's like. Make sure there's one. How about this? If you see an extra dot, I'll give you an extra one. And it's a separate sheet of paper. Or okay. a different exam. Rather than me going page by page by page and all of them, making sure there's no extra dots. 
They don't pay me enough for that. Okay. So that is the Lewis structures. Okay. Well, we're not done with them. I really. They're sort of complicated. I'm not trying to zip past them. It's just we have to do those as the first step for the next thing. So we're not done with them. Okay. When, when we're drawing them up here, I said it didn't matter what orientation you drew things, as long as you had the center atom and then the things around it. Right? But that's because it's in two dimensions. Molecules actually exist in three dimensions. And so molecules have shapes. In, in our world, the regular regular world, the shape of molecules will affect taste and smell. Okay? Also, in terms of biological molecules in our body, every molecule that actually does something in our body is a protein called an enzyme. Okay? And those enzymes have very, very, very specific shapes. If you have one little bond that's this way, pointing that way instead of that way, the enzyme's not going to work. So the shape of a molecule is really, really important. When I was an under, undergraduate student, I worked at a chemical company on, on the side. And I was made a lot of cosmetic products. I made sunscreen and lotions and, and foundation and perfume and all kinds of stuff. Okay? One of the things we made was for a Japanese company we made some laundry detergent, okay? And they said they wanted their laundry detergent to have this fragrance in it. And they said we wanted it to have limonene in it. I was an undergraduate student, a biochemistry major. I had no idea what limonene was. My boss was a theoretical physicist. They got laid off and they moved him to sunscreens. So he has no idea what limonene is. So I go online and I order some limonene. And it comes. And I open the bottle and it smells absolutely horrible. And I take it to my boss and I say, are you sure you read their email right? Because there's no way they want their laundry to smell like this. And he looks at his email and it says, limonene. And so we say, well, they're Japanese. We don't know what Japanese people want their laundry to smell like. <laughs> We're not saying Japanese people are weird or anything, just American and Japanese people may have slightly different perceptions of what they, what they want their laundry to smell like. And so we went ahead with them, and we, and we sent it to them, and they emailed my boss saying, what is this? It smells absolutely horrible. They said it smells like a wet dog. What did you send us? And we said, we sent you limonene. That's what you wanted. And they said, did you order D-limonene or L-limonene? It's this difference. In one of them, the bond points that way. In one of them, the bond points that way. One of them smells like a wet dog. One of them smells nice. And when I went on the website, I said, look, there's two different kinds. This one's cheaper. Why not order that one? I don't know the difference. <laughs> Apparently, it's cheaper because it smells like a wet dog. But chase is important, okay? So we have to figure out, if we are given a formula for a molecule, what is the shape of that molecule? And we're going to have to do multiple steps to get there. The first one is going to be writing the Lewis structure, okay? Like with the smell, taste also has to do with shape. <coughs> You've certainly heard of Splenda, right? Do you remember the, 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 the advertising phrase they used for Splenda? It, it's made from it's made from sugar, so it tastes like sugar. That's their slogan. Okay, they're trying to differentiate them, them, themselves from NutraSweet and things like that. Okay, but those things are have nothing to do with sugar. They just taste sweet. Our taste buds have little kind of like key shapes in them. And any molecule that fits in that key will send the sweet signal to our brain. So it doesn't matter whether it's a sugar molecule or something else, if it fits in that sugar, sugar lock, 
it's going to send the sweet signal. So things like NutraSweet, even though they look nothing like sugar, they're nothing at all like sugar, they fit in the same lock so they taste sweet. Splenda, they literally start with sugar and they replace some of these OH groups. This is an oxygen and a hydrogen, those hydrox hydroxide uh, ions. They replace them with chlorines. And so the overall shape of the molecule doesn't change. And a chlorine is essentially the same size as an oxygen and a hydrogen combined. So to our tongues, Splenda looks exactly like sugar. And so it tastes sweet, but the, the oxygens are what allow the sugar to be broken down in our body and what give us the calories. So if you replace them with chlorine, all of a sudden our body can't break them down, they just pass right through, and we get no calories from them. So that's why Splenda tastes like sugar, even though it is no longer actually sugar. Right. We're going to predict our molecule shapes. First step is always to draw the Lewis structure. So, if you are asked to draw the shape of a molecule, you can't just draw a shape. It's also asking you to draw the Lewis structure. Because you can never do the shape without the Lewis structure. So a shape problem is also a Lewis structure problem. So you have to do the Lewis structure. If you try to skip it, you're going to get the shape wrong. This whole theory of predicting shapes is called the VSEPR, or because the Sepper is hard to say, people call it the Vesper theory. It's basically working off the idea that since electrons are negative, and they're all negative, they repel each other. And so the pairs of electrons will want to get as far away from each other as possible. And so the electrons are going to get as far away from each other as possible, and then the atoms that they're bonded to will essentially follow. So the electrons find where they want to go, and then that dictates the shape of our molecule. Okay. So bear with me as we go through this, okay? There's multiple steps. First thing you have to do after you draw your Lewis structure is count how many things are on the center atom. And yes, thing is my term, okay? A thing is a single bond, a double bond, a triple bond, or an electron pair that is not part of a bond. We call those lone pairs, okay? A single bond is one thing. A lone pair is one thing. A double bond is one thing. And a triple bond is one thing. A triple bond is not three things. It is one thing. Okay? You then need to take all those things and get them as far away from each other as possible. So for this lecture, I normally bring a piece of old fruit from the refrigerator that no one's going to eat, and we do it three-dimensionally, but I forgot it today. So we just got to go by the pictures. Okay. So imagine here we have a center atom in the middle. And then we have two things that we need to put on either side in order to get them as far away as possible. So imagine that's my center atom. And I have to arrange these two things somewhere around that center atom to get these two things as far away from each other as possible. In this case, it's pretty obvious they just need to go on opposite sides. Right? That one's easy. Once we add a third thing, it becomes trickier. Essentially what I do is I put them in thirds around it, sort of like a peace sign or a Mercedes-Benz symbol. Okay? So you can see that there are thirds there. Those are as far away from each other as possible. That one is still pretty easy to see, probably. The really tricky one is number four. It would seem that the, if you add a fourth, you just do it in quarters, like a cross or a plus sign. In two dimensions, that's correct. But the molecules are in three dimensions. So what we end up with is sort of a pyramid shape. These three balloons are in thirds, 
like the peace sign, but they're pointed down a little bit. Instead of being straight out, they're pointed down. And then the fourth one sticks straight up. Okay? So imagine that. Everybody look quick. <laughs> Okay, so it's basically a pyramid with a post sticking out at the top of it. Okay, so that is how you get the four things as far apart from each other as possible. So methane is CH4, this is natural gas, this is what we burn in our Bunsen burners. It has four things around that center of carbon. There are four hydrogens. But we don't count atoms. We count bonds and lone pairs. So in this case, we have four single bonds, which are four things. And so when they get as far away from each other as possible, we have that shape. Three hydrogens that are in third, but they're pointed down a little bit, and the fourth one sticking straight up. And so in the ball and stick model, it looks like that. If you do two things directly opposite of each other, what are the bond angles? 180, right? It's 360 all the way around. It's 180, half of that, to go like that. Once we have three things, now what are my bond angles? 120, a th one third of 360. 360 divided by three is 120. So it's 120, 120, 120. Unless you are some sort of a visual math whiz, you probably can't figure out that in three dimensions that can look to be 109.5 degrees. So you're gonna have to memorize that number. That is a number you have to memorize. I'm not just telling you that because you got to learn all of this. I'm telling you, you're going to need that number. Okay. 109.5 degrees. Is 360 degrees in two dimensions. And if we have two or three things, we're literally we're still only working in two dimensions. Once we add the fourth thing, we're now in three dimensions. And so for that 109.5, some of it is going this way, but some of it is also going this way. And so combined, it comes to 109.5. Is each angle going to 9.5? Right. And so this is 109.5, that's 109.5, that's 109.5, that's 109.5, between this one and this one is 109.5. Every angle in that molecule is 109.5 degrees. Okay, so we have what we call parent structures. First step to finding the molecular shape is to find the parent structure. To find the parent structure, you count the number of things. If you have two things, that is a linear parent structure. So just in a row, it's called linear. It's 180 degrees. If you have three things, you get the thirds, the 120 degrees, that is called trigonal planar. If you have four things, you get 109.5, and it's called tetrahedral. You'll need to know those names. Two things linear, three things in trigonal planar, four things in tetrahedral. This is trigonal because there are three things. And it's called planar because they're flat. We, they're in the same plane, and so we say it's planar. Trigonal planar. So, count the number of things, find the parent structure. That is still not the molecular shape. We have further than that. But 
Finding the parent structure is always the hardest part. We're not going to do all of these, Ryan. We don't have enough time. We'll do CO2, which is one we already did the Lewis structure. So CO2. Looks like that. How many things are on that center atom? Two. Six. Four. I got a two, a four, and a six. Four, how many things? I got an eight. Four. Do I have any eighteen? It's six. Four. Three. All the other six. A lone pair is a thing. Are there any lone pairs? No, two. We're only looking at the carbon. Only the center atom. There are two things. There are two double bonds. Double bond is only one thing. Remember that. A double bond is one thing. A triple bond is one thing. So there are two things on that center atom. So those one, two, two, four, those two, four dots will count as one. Correct. That is one double bond. Okay. So that is one thing. So it has two. It has two things. So what is the parent structure of that molecule? Linear. Linear. Okay. SO2 was that. How many things are on that center atom? Three. Three. A single bond, a double bond, and a lone pair. So what is the parent structure of SO2? Trigonal plane. Okay. Even if you can't do the, the last step, the shape, most of these problems are going to be written problems with, for partial credit as possible. If you can get this far, you're going to get a lot of points. the parent structure. We have to make the last jump to the shape. When we draw the shape, we essentially imagine the parent structure and then erase the lone pairs. Okay? So this is water. If you look at water, if you draw parent, if you draw the Lewis dot structure, the oxygen has two single bonds and two lone pairs, which is four things. Four things is tetrahedral. If you draw that, it looks like that. Two hydrogens and two lone pairs. What we're going to do is imagine this without the lone pair. And so if you erase these, all you're left with is hydrogen bonded to oxygen bonded to hydrogen. Do you see that? So those are the steps for, for doing that. Draw the Lewis structure, count the number of things, find the parent structure, erase the lone pairs, and see what you have left. But you can erase different numbers of things, depending on how many lone pairs there are. That water had two lone pairs to erase. You can have something that's tetrahedral, but only has one lone pair. And that's going to be a different shape. Okay? So this table shows you all of the different possible shapes. Okay? I think it's at least two slides long. So this is a general form. This is a center atom with two molecules, two atoms attached to it. There are two atoms on it. Okay? If there are zero lone pairs, two things, zero lone pairs, you have linear. There are two things, right? There are two bonds and no lone pair. There's two things. So your paired structure is linear. Paired structure is linear. Since there are no lone pairs, you, there's nothing to erase. And so your shape is the same as your parent structure. Your shape is also linear. Once we have three things, we have three things, we can have three, three bonds and no lone pairs, or we can have two, two bonds and one lone pair. 
even though they are both trigonal planar to start with, they both have three things. They both have a trigonal planar parent structure, but here we erase nothing. So the shape is also trigonal planar. In this one, we erase that lone pair. What we're left with is that. That is a bent shape. You see how it's bent? It looks like linear, but bent. That's what you call it. So the, the name of that shape is bent. And every time you erase, if you start, if you start with a trigonal planar and you erase one, you have bent. If we have four things, we start with tetrahedral. And so, if all four of them are atoms, we erase nothing. And so our shape is also tetrahedral. If one of them is a lone pair, we erase that. And now, we, all we have left is the bottom part of that pyramid. And that is called trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal planar was when they were straight out. Trigonal pyramidal is when they're pointed down. Okay? And then if two of them are lone pairs, we have to erase both of them. And what we're left with is again a bent shape. Right? But the bond angles between them are dependent on the parent structure. So what were the bond angles? in a tetrahedral parent structure. 109.5. And so here, we have 109.5. And here, you would see we have 109.5. If we go back, in this bent structure, what's the angle? 120. So a bent molecule can come in two varieties. A 120 that started the trigonal planar, and a 109.5 that started as tetrahedral. Okay. Now this is where you're going to kick me, but you can't blame me. Okay, This is not my fault. This bent is not actually 109.5. These electrons actually repel those atoms to force them to come a little bit closer together. And so the bond angle there is less than 109.5. Okay? If you see that on an exam, the actual answer is less than 109.5. But don't blame me. Right. So we are going to do one, one quick example. We're going to do the shape of the nitrite ion. So we're going to put N, O, O. We have 6 and 6 is 12, plus 5 is 17, but it's negatively charged. So it has one extra. So we have 18 electrons. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So what do I have to do? Nitrogen only has 6. So how can I get an extra 2? You want a double bond? We'll do one double bond. So I'm going to end up with that. Okay. So how many things are on my center atom? Three. Oh, I'm sorry, two. Three. Oops, oops. Three. <laughs> three. A single bond, a double bond, and a lone pair. That's three things. What is my parent structure? Trigonal. Trigonal planar. So I'm going to do my best drawing of it. And I'm going to go nitrogen, oxygen, oxygen, lone pair. <laughs> <laughs> so 
that is my parent structure. If I want to get the molecular shape, what's the last thing I do? Erase the lone pair. When I erase the lone pair, that is my molecular shape. What is the name of that shape? That's a bent. It's a bent, and it's 120 degrees. No. You say it's bent, and when you tell me it's 120 degrees, that tells me it started as trigonal planar. The parent is trigonal. Yes, the parent structure is trigonal planar. When you erase the molecular shape, what, what does it become? When you erase the electrons from the parent structure, it becomes the molecular shape. So, you, okay, so I, you, I thought you said if you erase a molecular shape, it becomes something. You, you erase the lone pairs to get the molecular shape. Okay. So this is a type of an exam question. The exam question would also say, draw the bond angles. Okay? And then I'll spare you. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out for the last few slides. It's probably on the homework. I'll figure something out. You're good to go. I should hope. I hope.